Okay. Uh, so now where is the mic? Audible. Uh, yeah, perfect. So guys, uh, let's start with the standard which is AS10, sure shot question from the standard. Uh, that's why we are going to solve not only study material questions, plus we will solve RTP and past papers also. So in totality, in totality, we are going to solve total 27 to 28 questions. Let's start with this. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, yeah. So good, uh, good morning or we can say good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is. Yeah. Let's start with this. So now. Achha, if you want to follow, so this PDF is given in the description, first of all, you don't have to refer any other material or in all relevant links for the videos and you can scan this and you can get this, Insta, Telegram, whatever it is. Now, let's start with this without wasting any time. The name of the standard is AS10 PPE, which is Property, Plant and Equipment. Try to understand this. Now, understand this. Suppose you are a businessman just a one thing okay suppose you are a businessman okay you buy something now what is pp it is like your fixed asset earlier uh, it was fixed asset now we see it is ppe property plant and equipment let us understand this if you first of all it should be th1 not that important from exam perspective first let us cover the meaning what is very important is depreciation component accounting subsequent measurement these parts are very important okay so first we're gonna start with meaning. What is PPE? Uh, just a, a idea. Yeah, PPE is nothing but it is tangible item. T. It should be tangible because if it is intangible, there is another standard which is there in group two. Okay, so it should be tangible item which is T. Then H. It should be held for use in either a production or we can say supply that is distribution purpose production is like machine you are manufacturing something to machine is required and to distribute you require a delivery van and for accounting purpose you require a laptop so your laptop is ppe your delivery van is ppe your machine is ppe either it is used for production supply or admin purposes or it is used for rental purposes you have bought one machinery and you are doing only one thing you are giving giving it on rent still it will cover under p it will be covered under ppe okay sir if it is held for a cell if machinery is held for sale, then it is covered under in uh, AS2, which is inventory. You just buy and you sell that. Okay. So if it is intangible, another standard. If it is held for sale, it is another standard. Okay. And the life of the asset should be more than one accounting period. Sir, why? Life of the asset should be more than one accounting period. If it is less than one accounting period, it will be written off. How can it be an asset? So to have an asset, it should be more than one period so that it can be shown in the balance sheet. Okay. So now, chalo, just we have understood it should be tangible. It should be held for use, we will say. That is the power ke liye. It should be held for production, administration or rental. And then there is life should be more than one period. Understandable. So sir, now I have understood that what is PP. It should be tangible and everything. Now sir, if I go outside, I can see n number of ppe's even bus is a ppe tangible life more than one year train is ppe will you record that in your balance sheet no if there are n number of ppe's which are available property plant and equipment when will you recognize those in your books of account if two conditions are satisfied and both conditions should be satisfied so now guys we are coming to the recognition criteria when will you recognize or when will you show that ppe in your balance sheet okay so now understand this you will show that in your balance sheet when cost can be reliably measurable and it is probable that future economic benefit will flow to the entity now if you go outside you can see bus you can get the benefit from the bus right you can get the benefit future economy it is like this if i make pnl account here is a cost here is a benefit so now i will get benefit from bus bus have I incurred acquisition costs for the bus? No, I am just paying the rental service. So bus you cannot record in your books of account. Only if you buy the bus, then you can record it in your books of account. So something can be recorded in your books of accounts only if you have incurred costs for it. And after incurring a cost, that thing is giving you benefit. Then it is an asset. So cost should be incurred so that you can write the amount and uh, future economic benefit will flow to the entity. Recognition criteria, which is with TH1 tangible held for sale life more than one period recognition is cost and future economic benefit right now sir something is pp we have understood when will you recognize in your books of account that is also understood now sir when you record it in your books of account it will be recorded at what value so initial recognition is done at cost it means let us say you went to the market you bought one machinery or let us say you bought one delivery van 
so when you buy that delivery van you paid 10 lakh rupees let us say for a delivery van so you will say it is your ppe that is ppe account debit to bank account you bought so ppe ppe is recorded at uh, recorded at cost in the initial stage we will say agreed sir understandable so initially it is recorded at cost okay there are three ways to buy the ppe or uh, to get the ppe either you can purchase like delivery van or you can construct acquired purchase or acquired or sorry here it can be purchased or it can be constructed that is what we gonna see we will see this you can construct a pp or you can buy the pp you can buy the machinery or you can yourself develop the machinery or laptop we will say or you can purchase it on credit on deferred credit we will say that emi basis and you can exchange like a barter exchange we will do that how you buy an asset first i will come to this part that is depreciation then i will do this later on okay so just wait for these three parts till now i am done guys i am done with this meaning and recognition now first let me go with this depreciation component accounting we will come to initial recognition do not worry now when i talk about depreciation everybody knows it is reduction in the value of asset okay perfect sir when you use an asset there is reduction in the value of asset now let us come to the fourth part first depreciation now understand these notes are made here if you see when do you start depreciation it is very important try to understand depreciation will start when pp is ready in ready to use condition put to use is irrelevant sir what is this put to use let let me explain that what is put to use let us say you bought an asset on 1st january you bought an asset let us say machinery or something you bought on 1st january and you started using that machinery from 1st feb onwards 1st feb onwards so you will start depreciation from which date you will start depreciation from 1st january when it was ready to use you bought the machinery it was ready to use but you decided now there is no order let us use it after one month karke so you are using that machinery after one month still because of time even there is a depreciation if you sell this asset it will not be sold for the same price right so depreciation will start when the asset is in ready to use condition put to use wala date is irrelevant you may use it after one year that doesn't mean you will charge depreciation after one year you will start from here itself when asset is ready to use put to use is irrelevant done sir when will you stop charging depreciation end you will stop charging depreciation when asset is sold sir if asset is sold it will not appear in your books of account so if no asset no depreciation or if asset is held for a sale that is now you are not going to use it you are going to sell that asset so how can you charge the depreciation it should be recorded at fair value then whatever is the value that is something which is done now i can just say that if asset is held for sale or if it is sold so no depreciation should be charged so now in between this time depreciation should be charged when you bought the asset it was ready to use and before sell whatever duration was there you have to charge the depreciation now sir this standard is very specific about what this standard says that when you charge depreciation it should be charged component wise sir what is this component wise let us say you bought one land and building you bought one bungalow or let us say you bought one factory for that matter land and entire factory one part entire thing you bought and you paid something 100 lakhs or something you paid now i can say that land is something which is not depreciated it has a infinite life so land should not be depreciated so you should say that you bought that factory for 100 lakh rupees out of that 30 lakh pertains to land and 70 lakhs pertain to building so now in this case this land should not be depreciated it will appear at 30 lakh only and when you charge the depreciation you will estimate what is the life of this building the structure which is created it will be used for how many years let us say 7 years so accordingly you will charge the depreciation 70 lakh should be written off in 7 years it means you need to understand component wise when i say land should not be depreciated and building should be depreciated so there is in detail also sir ha huh, in income tax it is put to use that is okay yeah now if i just talk about building again you can divide that in various parts if roof has a different life different depreciation acha sir let us do one question we will get more idea about this this component wise depreciation okay sir let us do one question so depreciation wale question will start from question number 18 let us do question number 18 you will get more idea those who are live if you really appreciate my work you can always like the video just a reminder from my side okay now 
सर लेट एस कम टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 18 जस्ट पे अटेंशन हियर क्वेश्चन नंबर 18 गाइस ओके ऑल क्वेश्चंस आर कवर्ड ऑल मींस ऑल वी विल से आरटीपी पास्ट पेपर्स एंड स्टडी मटेरियल बिकॉज़ इट इज अ शॉर्ट शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस स्टैंडर्ड एंड पीपल फील दिस इज क्वाइट डिफिकल्ट स्टैंडर्ड राइट सो अंडरस्टैंड इट इज आरटीपी मे 18 क्वेश्चन नाउ अंडरस्टैंड I have bought one machinery freehold. Freehold it means I have bought it, and when I say leasehold, I took it on rent. Okay, it is freehold. Nobody has ownership. I am the owner of this property. I bought it for ninety lakh rupees. Understandable. So now I want to charge the depreciation every year on this property. Okay, which method will be follow? Straight line method we are going to follow on this ninety lakh. But sir, we have divided this ninety lakh on component wise. We have said. Out of this, there is no residual value, which is mentioned. No residual value. So this ninety lakh has been divided land in finite life. So no depreciation on that. When I say roof, it will be having a life of twenty five years. The roof of that factory we will say, and ten lakh has been incurred for that roof. Now if I tell you calculate the depreciation, you will say, sir, ten lakh I have incurred and twenty five uh, years is my life. So no depreciation over here. Ten lakh divided by twenty five. Take the calculator and please calculate. 10 lakh divided by 25, it will come to 40,000. Perfect, your depreciation. Lifts, if I just talk about, it has a life of 20 years. So 5 lakh divided by 20, if you do it on the calculator, it is going to be 25,000. Then fixtures, if I just talk about, it is 5 lakh divided by 10. Everybody, yeah, 50,000. I appreciate your answers. Okay, now remainder of the building, the 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 balance part of the building. For which we have incurred a fifty lakh and life is fifty years, so fifty lakh divided by fifty that comes to one lakh. Now if I take the total forty thousand, twenty five thousand, fifty thousand, one lakh. Answer two lakh fifteen thousand is my depreciation. I don't think there is now. You understood that. You just need to present as per AS ten property plant equipment component wise depreciation will will be like this. Understandable, sir. Very easy. We understood this question, so we are done with question number eighteen over here. Okay, chalo. So component wise, I have explained. Now let us again come to this part. Okay. So, sir, now when you charge the depreciation, which methods can be followed? You can follow. In it is given. It can be straight line method that you understand. It is nothing but cost minus crab divided by estimated working life. You get every year same depreciation, sir. Another thing, there is one more depreciation. Return down value. That is also you understand that you bought asset for hundred minus ten percent. You ninety ninety on ninety you will calculate ten percent. Now it is nine. Then eighty one on eighty one you will calculate ten percent. Yes, sir. We know this. Okay. Then there is a unit of production method. Suppose you know that you have bought a machinery. For five lakh rupees, and it is going to produce only fifty thousand units. So accordingly, this five lakh ka depreciation, five lakh will be depreciated over this fifty thousand units. If you produce hundred units, that much depreciation will be charged based on units. That is something that you understand. Yes. So this is understandable. This is understandable. This is understandable. Now, during this period when you charge depreciation, these methods can be there. Sometimes you can change your mind. We always change our mind. Like what to do, sir? This or that? That is change in method now. Okay. acha even there is a logic also why you follow this methods and all uh, but yeah let's just keep it to the exam perspective now understand change in the method let us say two years you followed slm method now you feel maybe the wdb method is the more better method which will represent my shareholder in much better way this method so now there is a change in method it will have a prospective effect you will not change financial statements of earlier years now that effect will be given from next year onwards considering the changes in accounting estimate so we did not get this point wait we are going to solve questions like we did here so the by that you will understand this do not worry when we change the method effect will be given in the next year, that from that year onwards no retrospective effect when we solve the question you will understand okay sir so journal entries okay journal entries so journal entry is very easy for depreciation you will say depreciation to ppe we have done that in government ground also ha just to remind you you can check the playlist which is given in the description more videos are there as2 11 and i think 12 has been already uploaded okay even redemption of debenture you can see that it is in hindi but still if you are comfortable you can watch that okay now depreciation to pp and depreciation will be transferred to pfd or pnl account and if you are aware Sometimes we don't want to touch our fixed asset account. Okay, we don't want to reduce this PP, so we create one PFD account. So we say depreciation, but we do not reduce the value of the asset. Instead, we create one account, accumulated depreciation, provision for depreciation. 
and then this depreciation will be transferred to PNL account. Now, let us solve more questions. Uh, yeah, you will understand as to what I wanted to say. We solved one question, which is question number eight component wise depreciation. Let us solve more questions. Now, this lot of efforts I have put in, you don't, uh, you won't understand just to take this 1.5 hours or 2 hours lectures. I was just sitting for 4 to 5 hours just to make these notes. Okay. So, let's start with this. Now, Question number 19, if I just talk about uh, November 2020 paper, it was, it came, it is very easy now, you understand this, sir, one machinery we have purchased, just take your calculator, okay, change in accounting estimate and policy, we will do that, first let's do this, okay, now, sir, machinery you have purchased for uh, 10 lakh rupees on 1st April 2015, residual value of the machinery is 10 uh, lakhs and this is 5 years, just do one thing, you have purchased machinery for 10 lakh rupees. This will never happen. But if they have given you how to follow, you have purchased a machinery for 10 lakh rupees. And you are saying that residual value after 5 years, if I sell this machinery after 5 years, I will get 10 lakh rupees. Are, how can you get the same value? Maybe if they say you will get because of demand or something, let us say. I hope you understand when I say cost, cost is 10 lakh minus scrap is also 10 lakh so sir there is no depreciation at all no depreciation on this they are asking us to calculate depreciation so i will say point number one there is nil depreciation cost minus scrap so nothing is there to write off nil depreciation understandable you have purchased land for 50 lakh rupees or a sir land has infinite life how can you charge depreciation so land again because it has infinite life does not have finite life so again there is no depreciation on land also understandable sir a machinery sir you have bought a machinery a machinery is constructed for 5 lakh rupees understandable it has a life of 10 years okay and sir construction is completed on 1st april so building of this machinery was ready to use on 1st april 2019 but you started using this machinery but the company did not begin using the machinery until 31st March. They are asking us to calculate depreciation for this year end. 31st March 2020. And if you see, this machinery which we have purchased, which has a life of 10 years, is not put to use till 31st March. So no depreciation, no, it doesn't matter. Put to use doesn't matter. It was ready for use on which date? This date. So the entire one year car depreciation will come. You will say 5 lakh divided by 10. It has a life of 10 years, so 5 lakh divided by 10. Perfect. 50,000 Sagar uh, uh, Sandhya, uh, right answer. So, perfect. 50,000 rupees. Here you see the depreciation. Perfect. Third wale ka. Now, it was ready to use, right? Machinery is purchased on 1st April 2017. Okay. 50,000 with the useful life of 5 years. Okay. I want to calculate depreciation for this. 31st March 2020. Okay. Machinery was purchased for 50 lakh. Under 50,000 understandable. Then, sir, it has a life of 5 years and residual value is nil. So, every year you will provide kitna depreciation 50,000 divided by 5. Every year you will provide 10,000 ka depreciation on 1st April 2019. That is after how many year? Sir, 17. After 17, what will come is 18 and then 19 after 2 years. So, 2 years depreciation I have charged and now 30,000 is appearing in my balance sheet because 2 years depreciation I have charged. Now, management decided to use this asset. For further two years only. Okay. I hope you understand. Now there is a revision. Now you will give prospective effect. You will not change the depreciation of earlier years. Now you will say this 30,000 should not be written off in three years. Are five years ka life was there. Two years we are done with. So three years should be the life. But now we are feeling that that asset can be used only for further two years. So now depreciation will be 50,000. Hello. You will say 30,000 minus scrap value is nil divided by only two years. So now we will charge 15,000 as your depreciation for that year. So depreciation will be 15,000. Now it will have a prospective effect. I hope that was understandable. You cannot change the financial statement. So it will have a prospective effect. I hope that is very much clear everybody. So this was a question, question number 19. After this, let us come to question number 20. Okay, now let's come to this question. Okay, here I can see there is a, a property costing 10 lakh rupees, which is purchased on 1st April 2020. Total life is 50 years, okay. However, the company considers it 
likely that it will sell the property after 25 years. See, this life doesn't matter. Even though it has a life of 50 years, but what I am planning, why after buying the asset, I am going to use this property for 25 years. After 25 years, I will sell this property. So, I will depreciate this property over 25 years because I have decided I will use it only for 25 years. And after 25 years, what is the scrap value? 10 lakhs. And how can you charge the depreciation? You purchased it for 10 lakhs and you are going to use this property for 25 years. And after 25 years, your scrap value will be 10 lakh only. So cost minus scrap. Sir, nil. How can you charge the depreciation in first case? So case number A, there is nil depreciation. But if I talk about case number B, I will say 10 lakh is my cost. I bought the machinery uh, for 10 lakh. My scrap value is 9 lakh. So cost minus scrap 1 lakh a depreciation I need to charge and this 1 lakh should be written off in PNL over 25 years because that is what I will use it for. So 1 lakh divided by 25. So 4000 ka depreciation will appear every year. That is understandable. 5 marks question if it comes it is very easy right. These are the questions that can come okay. Even I am covering RTP also. So that you should be done with this. It may take half an hour extra but we will cover this. Okay sir understandable 4000 chalo. Now let us come to this. This is from the module illustration number 13. Okay, chalo. Question number 21. Let us come to this. Okay, after 19, uh, sorry, 20. Now let us come to 21. Okay, see, I have constructed, uh, entity B constructs a machine which is completed on 1st November. Work is done. It is ready to use on 1st November, but it is put to use on 1st March. So depreciation should be charged from when? It was completed. Completed was this that is ready to use. 1st November. That's it. So depreciation should begin from 1st November and not 1st March. So that is what you will write. That comment. So you will say that. Begin charging depreciation from the date when the machinery is ready to use. Sir, which is 1st November. Put to use. Ready to use is. Yeah, yeah, this is not relevant. It was already to, ready to use. So you will say that this is the date which is important. Put to use is not relevant, which is first March is not relevant. Understandable. Yes, sir. Okay, there is one more question, but I did not give that number. Okay. So 22 after 22, it should be 21k, but it should be 22 and 23. Chalo, I forgot. That's okay. But let's come to this question also. Chalo, so one more extra question is there we can say. Okay. Entity has a policy. Entity has a policy, please understand, of not providing depreciation on PPE capitalized in the year. Okay. It means understand, let us say this is financial year, okay. I have purchased one property on 1st Jan. My finan I follow financial year. So tell me I should charge depreciation for how many months or 3 months. My year will end on 31st March. So I should charge at least depreciation for those 3 months. Yes, I have purchased the property on 1st Jan. But what this company does, uh, not providing depreciation on PP capitalized. When I capitalize, 10 lakh PP I have capitalized on first year when I purchase it. I do not charge depreciation. I start charging depreciation from the following year that is next year. Okay. And but provides full year depreciation in the year of the disposal of the asset. And when I sell the asset, let us say I sell the asset on 31st May. So financial year begins on April to April and May. Two months depreciation should be there. So then it charges entire depreciation which is wrong. When you, it should not be like this key on the first year, you will not charge any depreciation. When you sell it in that year, you will charge entire depreciation. It should be systematic basis. So depreciation is reduction in the value of asset and it should be systematic basis over the useful life of the asset. It should be systematically written off over the useful life of the asset. So accordingly, uh, we can say that depreciation should commence as soon as the asset is acquired and it is available for use. So what company is doing is not acceptable. Is this acceptable? No sir, this is not at all acceptable, understandable. Chalo. Now let us come to the next question, question number 22. Here if you understand that, again same thing is written that when PP is capitalized, I do not charge, not providing depreciation. Again the same question was there in the um, RTP 2020. So, these small questions can also come, okay. So, please just buy at this part, okay, if it comes in the exam. So, we will say that and again same, it provides full year depreciation uh, when it disposes, it is wrong, not acceptable. This thing is not acceptable. You have to charge depreciation on systematic basis, I will say that, okay, understandable. Chalo, question number 23. Let us come to question number 23, yeah, wrong treatment, okay. AS 16, yoga. we will see that what should be done, if it happens, so I will do it tomorrow, otherwise it won't, we'll 
अपडेट यू इन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप फॉर दट मैटर ए एस सिक्सटीन के लिए फर्स्ट लेट एस कंप्लीट दिस नाउ सर आई हैव परचेज एन असेट ओके सर फर्स्ट जनवरी वन लैख रुपीज एंड द असेट हैड एस्टिमेटेड यूजफुल लाइफ ऑफ टेन ईयर्स एंड रेसिडियल वैल्यू इज नील तो सर माई कॉस्ट इज वन लैख रुपीज माई कॉस्ट इज सॉरी माई कॉस्ट इज वन लैख रुपीज माइनस रेसिडियल वैल्यू इज नील डिवाइडेड it has a life of 10 years so 1 lakh will be written off over 10 years it means 10000 i will write off every year okay on 1st january 20 x5 that is after how many years if i calculate 1st jan 1st jan so after x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 after 4 years it means you will charge 4 years depreciation and every year you will charge 10000 as your depreciation so you bought an asset for 1 lakh rupees after 4 years we will say if you calculate from here to here that is after 4 years we have charged 40000 depreciation 10000 every year now what is the value of the what is the carrying amount of the asset it should be it is 60000 now tell me what was the life of the asset life of the asset was 10 years here we have charged 4 years ka depreciation now what should be the life of the asset 6 years but there is revision in the life you will give prospective effect now you are thinking the asset will be having i have reviewed it and i am thinking that now life of the asset is not 6 years it should be 6 because out of 10 we have provided 4 years ka depreciation so 6 years should be the life but now we are estimating that now life is only 4 years now this 60000 will be written off in this 4 years so i will say 60000 minus scrap value which is not there divided by 4 years 60000 will be written off in 4 years exactly which is 15000 shiv uh, that is right answer 15000 yeah सागर ओके डी डी वी विल से या परफेक्ट आंसर कॉन्सिक्वेंटली दिस इज गना बी यूर आंसर एंड देवर आस्किंग फॉर दिस टेल इज द डेप्रिसिएशन अमाउंट ऑफ डेप्रिसिएशन इच इयर तो फर्स्ट फोर इयर्स इट इज टेन थाउजेंड एवरी इयर एंड फॉर नेक्स्ट फोर इयर्स देन वेन रिविजन इज डन इट इज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड डन सर Now let us come to question number twenty four. Question number twenty four. What is there in the question? Sir, you bought an property costing ten lakh rupees. The property was purchased on two zero x one. Okay, sir. It was having a life of fifty years. I don't care because I was planning to sell the property after how many years? Twenty years. So this is what is important for me. Please understand. I bought the property for ten lakh rupees. I will use it for twenty years. And after using it for twenty years, again it is the same question. It has a ten lakh you uh, ka residual value. So I hope you understand. In first case, there is no depreciation. These are repetitive. If you understand, so questions can come from here only. RTPs, past papers, uh, institute ka module, everything I have compiled so that it would be easier for you. Ki ha, these are again there in RTP also. So now this 10 lakh cost minus scrap, sir, nil, sir, no depreciation. First case, there is no depreciable amount, sir. Second case, sir, I have purchased an asset for 10 lakh. Now this time scrap value is not 10 lakh. It is nine lakh divided by twenty years life. So ten lakh minus nine lakh one lakh in twenty years. Yeah, five thousand ka depreciation. Only life has changed. In the earlier question, it was twenty five years. In this question, it is twenty years. That's it. Nothing has changed except the life. Okay. So life. Okay. It is five lakh now, sir. If residual value was given in that question, then we divide by four years instead of six years. Yeah, if residual value is given in the question, you will subtract. Hello, when you say this, you would have written this: sixty thousand minus residual value divided by four years. Hello, that is what you will do. Always cost minus scrap divided by life. That will be done. Tanya, I hope that is clear. Now this question is done. Now let us come to question number twenty-five, which was an RTP of twenty twenty-two. So yeah, let's see this here. Okay, sir, I have purchased an machinery two hundred lakh rupees, sir. Okay. Life is ten years, and for your revision purpose, I have underlined only these parts so that during examination you can read only those one day before vagra. Yeah, this, this, this. Karke it will become easier for you. Then after second year, at the end of second year, I mean after two years something is there. So now I have purchased a property for twenty twenty or two hundred lakh, two crores we will say, and it was having a life of ten years. Okay, so ah, uh, ah, sorry, this question number twenty five. If if I just tell you. Here, if I come, please understand. Here, 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 here. Okay. So now we are done with this part. We are done with question number eighteen to question number twenty-four. Now we are dealing with component accounting. Let us understand what is this component accounting. Okay. There is one question on that, which is component accounting. Okay. Let us. Uh, but the entire amount of residual value. Then no depreciation, Tania. Then in that case, there is no depreciation. If residual value is same. I didn't get you, Tanya. Like if residual, I didn't get your question as such. Okay. Now, 
This is clear. Depreciation wala part is clear. You can reframe the question. Now component accounting. What does it say? Question number 25. Understandable. Very understandable. Now see. If I say this point number, which point number I have to go to? Question point number 5. I will have to go to question number, uh, yeah, point number 5. So if I refer this component accounting, what does it say? And which is, which makes sense also. It says that. Yeah, if scrap value is given in the question, you will always subtract that. Cost minus scrap divided by life. And if scrap value is higher, or if scrap value, cost minus scrap is same, there is no depreciation. Cost is equal to scrap, then no depreciation. Understand? Component means what? Component means a part of PPE which has a significant cost. Let us take an example. PPE and its component. If I have an air conditioner, so it has a compressor. And maybe the life of the air condition is different and the compressor which is there. You must be aware what is compressor. It may have a different life. So it is one component. So when you charge depreciation or whatever you do, it should be different. Depreciation on uh, air condition should be based on its life 10 years. Let us say its life is 5 years based on that. Again, if it is a car, car and its engine is one component. Machine and its turbine, we will say it is one component. Building and its roof is one component. Okay, there is one more part which is there, but maybe it is not relevant at inter level. We will say that major inspection. If it is major inspection, again the same treatment as component accounting. But you don't have any questions as such on this. So, okay, you don't have to go through this. Okay, now understand. When I say component accounting, when you go for a depreciation, we have solved these questions. Depreciation. Simple. If if I tell you life of the air condition is 10 years and life of the compressor is also 10 years. Sir, how does it matter then? How can you say it is a different component? Same depreciation will come, right? Even this has a 10 years ka life, this has a 10 years ka life. So, sir, nothing to do, no separate depreciation. But sir, if life of the component is different, life of PP and component is different, then separate depreciation you will have to calculate. We did that. That roof ka depreciation differently and everything, that is something we did. So, sir, now what we are going to do? Sir, we are going to do replacement accounting. Sir, what is this replacement accounting? Understand. It's like this. You bought an AC. AC was having life of 10 years. But then there was a compressor. It has a life of 5 years. So, after 5 years, now you will have to replace this component, which is, uh, we will say that compressor. You will just, we will remove that compressor. We will add a new compressor, we will say, right? So, how it should be accounted for? Sir, it is very easy. Whatever is the PPE after 5 years, which is WDV of PPE after 5 years. Just get the WDV of the PPE after 5 years. Okay. Once you get this, once you get this PPE uh, value, now the new component you have added. So, just add it. Its cost. New compressor you have purchased for whatever amount. Just add that value. And whatever is your old component, you are removing that, right? So, whatever is the WDV of the old component, that should be subtracted. That's it. Again, it comes at CA final level. Ki if WDV is not given, then what to do? Karke. So, at your level, there is no need to uh, worry about this. Huh? But just I can say that, how to get the WDV? Karke. So, that is something. Uh, at inter level, there is no need for this. Okay. Let us solve the question. Uh, Sir, even if it has the same depreciation, we should show it component wise, right? Sagar, no need to show uh, separate if same depreciation. Huh, if different useful life, then we will say component accounting. Let me solve one question, you will understand for this replacement accounting. There is one question and that question is question number 25 now. We were there, question number 25. Everybody come to this, question number 25. Okay, perfect. So now understand this so sir i have purchased a property uh, uh one something for 200 lakhs okay i have written that sir after writing that i said the life is 10 years and at the end of two years but the two years are done we have completed two years to so charge depreciation for two years so 200 lakh divided by 10 200 lakh divided by 10 so depreciation will be 20 lakh every year so two years ka depreciation will be 20 lakhs into two sir 40 lakh ka depreciation so on this asset, if I charge two uh, years ka depreciation, my carrying value will be, my carrying value will be this, which is known as WDV of the old, WDV of the PPE, WDV of the PPE. And now after two years, what is happening? Let us understand. After two years, what is happening? One major component, let us say AC or anything, we will say it has a compressor. So there is one major component, which is boiler, they are saying. Whatever component it is, it became obsolete, kharap. it became, it is obsolete now. So now we have acquired a new component at a price of 50 lakh. So <coughs> 50 lakh should be added. I hope you understand. 50 lakh should be added. There is no problem with that. Because the component has been purchased, so you should add 50 lakh. But sir, old component is removed, so even that, you should remove that. So now understand, here it is written that, 
एंड रिक्वायर रिप्लेसमेंट तो सर न्यू कंपोनेंट एडेड जस्ट एडेड तो दिस इज क्लियर दिस एंड दिस इज क्लियर दिस एंड यू नीड टू एड दिस दिस मच इज क्लियर नाउ वन मोर थिंग इज देयर सर फर्दर द मेंटेनेंस वॉज अन इकोनॉमिकल तो वी हैव रिमूव द ओल्ड कंपोनेंट राइट the remainder of the plant is perfect it means out of that entire thing out of 160 lick only one component is damaged major component which is this uh, boiler which has been removed and it has been added by the new component which costed us 50 lakh it is added now understand the remainder of the component is perfect and is expected to last for next 8 years because out of 10 years 2 years we are done with it will last for next 8 years but now the cost of the new boiler is 60 lakh now what is this cost of the new boiler is 60 lakhs oh, acha sorry 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 i made one mistake sir what is a mistake that i made please understand the part which became obsolete was purchased at the price of rupees 50 lakh there is only one mistake which is done at my end i will just again uh, repeat the thing so that you shouldn't be having any confusion uh, i just did not read the question carefully it is a uh, 200 lakhs divided by 10 to 200 lakhs divided by 10 i got depreciation of 1 year into 2 so i got depreciation of 40 lakhs now value is this now old component which is removed now it was purchased at this value so can you get the wdv acha hello first of all one thing have they given us the life of the boiler house no if life of the boiler is given 5 years you will say it is 5 years but if nothing is given you will assume that life of the component is similar to the life of the asset if nothing is mentioned about this please understand is what i am saying i am saying the life of this boiler that is a component should be given in the question that it was having a life of 5 years so you will say sir 50 lakh i had purchased 2 years back divided by 5 years was expected life into 2 so 2 years ka depreciation i will get but sir 50 lakh divided by life is not given of component so i will assume it is equal to the uh, value of the the life of the asset main asset so i will say that 50 lakh divided by 10 i will get yearly depreciation into 8 so 50 lakh uh 50 lakh divided by uh 10 into 8 if i do into 8 if i do that is a chassis i will do one thing otherwise better is 50 lakh i have purchased for 50 lakh divided by 10 into 2 you will get depreciation 50 divided by 10 into 2 which is 10 lakh and if you subtract you have a wdv of 40 lakh but now you understand this wdv you will have to remove from this because that component you have removed so just remove this wdv and the new component which is purchased for 60 lakh you should add that that's it i hope that is understandable do you have any doubt or it is very much clear cost of new component should be added and wdv of the old component should be subtracted because that component is removed karke i hope that is uh, clear no doubt with this karke right chalo so now we can say that we are done with this part sir 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 we have done this many questions it's only 38 minutes and we are done this many questions sir from 80 to 25 okay sir now now let us come to this now let us come to this after that or uh, there is one uh, subsequent measurement criteria is also there let us complete these two questions which is subsequent measurement then i will come to this wala part then i will come to this wala part okay now let us understand what is subsequent measurement now first of all initially you record the asset at cost you bought the asset for 100 you have to record it for 100 rupees sir there is no doubt in that but sir it is initial recognition that is during the year you have purchased an asset record it for 100 but sir once the year is ended now at year end you will record it at what value so first of all this is initial recognition yes sir and when the year is ended during this year you will charge depreciation component wise which is done now the year is ended now the year is ended at the year end i will say institute has given us or this standard has given us two option either you can follow a cost model or you can follow the revaluation model cost model it means you can continue to show the asset at your wdv which is cost which is there now cost minus depreciation wdv whatever is appearing you can show it at that itself no change in value or you will say sir it is very wrong sir i have purchased land let us say that for 10 lakh rupees 10 years back 10 years back no depreciation now no depreciation now after 10 years this is again only appearing at 10 lakh rupees but that is not the fair value of the asset today if i sell this land i can get 80 lakh rupees that is the fair value so what shareholders are thinking that company is having a set only of 10 lakh rupees which is wrong it is giving wrong impression actually the worth of this asset is 80 lakh 
so the option is given that instead of showing it at cost model company can go for a revaluation model it means at the year end company can revalue its pp if it wants the models are given you can follow either cost model or revaluation model i hope sir this revised value will be depreciated on which residual value varun nahi i didn't get the question okay this revised value will be depreciated on which residual value no i didn't understand the question actually uh, now understand so now uh, now let us come to this uh, this wala part uh, yahan pe first of all let us understand the concept now then there are questions on that so here if i go here if i go go component accounting is done sir now understand subsequent measurement actually there is too much detailed explanation is available but from your examination perspective whatever was important i just keep that first is cost model that is you purchase asset for 100 minus 20 ka depreciation 80 that's it show it at 80 only or you will say nahi nahi sir don't show it at 80 today the market value of this asset is 85 so sir there is increase in value the increase the value how will you increase the value you will say sir asset should be debited yes sir pp account 5 rupees already it is appearing at 80 and there is upward valuation initially initially there is upward valuation so when i say pp is debited sir something you will have to credit it is income right but you cannot show it in the pnl account credit side are it will increase the income which is wrong it is your income i understand but is it from your business wagra i cannot say no it is just because of free valuation or shareholders will feel as if we have earned this income during the year no it is just because of free valuation so it should not hit your pnl account hello this is if there is increase it should be transferred to reserves and surplus we will say 5 rupees it will go in the surplus directly instead of transferring it from pnl account directly show it to the reserves and surplus directly it will be transferred okay sir again after one year there is a upward revaluation so if there is a upward revaluation it should be transferred to reserves and surplus there is no problem with that understandable sir now but sir now i feel that instead of this 80 rupees i feel that value of the asset is 78 rupees now the value of the asset has reduced pp 2 rupees you should credit you have to reduce the value of the asset so credit an asset credit that asset but sir what will you debit there what will you debit now it standard said concept of conservatism if there is a loss show it in the pnl account if there is a loss show it in the pnl account it should be reflected if there is a gain no it should not be reflected it should go to the reserves and surplus not in much detail but just to give you the idea is what should be done karke so it should be pnl account debit to this it means if there is a loss it will hit the pnl account again in the next year also there is a loss it will hit the pnl account same entry pnl to pp karke but sir now there is a twist in the third and fourth case let's try to understand this let us try to understand this initially initially when property was for rupees 100 you valued it for rupees 110 so it means there was a gain let us say there was a gain so you said pp account debit 10 to reserves and surplus 10 okay understandable sir after some years let us say that now reserves and surplus there is a balance of 10 after some years there is downward revaluation by 15 rupees now when i say 15 rupees it means pp should be credited sir what will you debit first sir what will you debit first so already because of the upward revaluation in the earlier year reserves and surplus balance is there at 10 rupees now when you are reducing it do not hit 15 rupees in the pnl account hello there was upward revaluation so first say revaluation uh, reval uh, yeah reserves and surplus 10 rupees which was credited now first debit that then if there is any excess then it should go to the pnl account i hope that is very much understandable is this understandable or not just let me know i hope it is clear if it should go to the pnl first check is there if there is a downward revaluation now so it should go to the pnl but first check if there is a reserves and surplus balance first debit that and then go with the pnl account now chalo let me go with another example this sir 100 ka you did 90 so you placed an entry as pp account should be credited and pnl account should be 10 sir that was the entry 10 rupees now now there is upward revaluation now when you say upward revaluation after some years so there is a downward revaluation by 10 so you pass this entry pnl to now after some years there is upward revaluation by 12 rupees so you will say pp account should be debited to reserves and surplus hello but nahi few years back you debited 10 rupees first credit that now show it as income it is just reversal of that now you can show it as income 10 rupees and then 2 rupees will go to the reserves and surplus hello 
पीएनएल को यू विल टेक टेन रुपीज बिकॉज अर्लियर इट वॉज डेबिटेड नाउ आई होप या दिस इज क्लियर करके सो या इफ दिस इज क्लियर देर इज वन मोर थिंग विच इज देयर If there is a revaluation, revaluation to be made for entire class of PP, sir. What is this class? Class we don't understand what is this class because we don't have one, right? So we don't understand what is class. करके let us understand what is class. अच्छा let us understand this. What is a uh, class? करके let's understand this. Now when I say class, it means it is very simple, sir. देखो let's read this. We will understand if an item of property, plant and equipment is revalued, then entire class of property, plant and equipment to which the asset belongs should be revalued. Sir, if you did not get anything, what you are saying? Just wait. You will understand this. Just wait. You will understand this. Okay. Now, if I say this in the company, sir, there is a balance sheet, and balance sheet has lot of items, land, building, etc., etc., etc. So, sir, if I follow cost model, is it for all the assets? No. You can follow it class by class. Now, what is class by class? Let us understand. Yeah. Let us understand what is class. करके. If I say land, so it is one class. So now, if you follow. You have ten lands, one here, one there, one here. This much property is there, land ka. So two, three lands you have. So if you value this one land at cost model, all lands should be valued at cost model. This is one class of land. So every you have aircrafts. Let us say you have five aircrafts. At least in example we can say that. Okay. So let us say you have five aircrafts. So for one aircraft you follow cost model for all. Aircraft, you have to follow class uh, uh, cost model or revaluation model, whatever it is. It should be class by class. We will say okay. Then motor vehicles or even. Ah, in building also there are two parts. So what is class first of all? Class is something of a property means a group of asset of similar nature and use. Similar nature and use. That is similar nature and similar use. We will say. Ah, when I say building, there is one office building, there is one industrial building. Hello. This is not one class. They are a different class. The use of industrial building is different. It is for production, and use of office building is for what purpose? It is for administration. So you cannot combine this. Keep one building. करके no. So office buildings are different classes, and we will say that industrial building is a different class. करके yeah. So in this case, can I follow cost model for this? Yes. can i follow revaluation model for this industrial building yes but in industrial buildings that is factories you have factory 1 factory 2 factory 3 factory 4 all the factories should be valued either at cost model or revaluation model i hope i am very much clear with my thought process what i wanted to convey yes sir i hope i am clear yeah that's a good number till now there are 80 likes i can see yeah thank you for that i will say yeah now let's understand this that is what gives the motivation will say okay now understand Question number twenty six. I am trying my level best to solve as many questions as I can for this standard. Okay, specifically for this standard. Okay, now nature and use should be same. Now even we have groups, right? All friends. Ka now understand. Question number twenty six, which is illustration number ten in your study material. Sir, entity A is there. It is a large manufacturing group. It manufactures so many things. Let us say it has one industrial zone buildings, which are there in industry, which manufactures something, and there are office buildings, which are in Uh, for business, for administration purpose, can you just let me know? First of all, in this case, management wants that it wants to apply revaluation model for the office building, but for cost model for industrial building. Can it be done? Are these different classes? Yes, sir. Understand? Office buildings have a different use, nature and nature and use should be same. Nature is building, let us say. ठीक है? पर sir, and use should also be the same. But use of office building is different, and use of uh, industrial building is different. So yeah, we can have a different model for industrial buildings and office buildings. But in office buildings, whatever buildings are there, all should be valued at cost or revaluation. Whatever it is, or all it should be there. Okay, now understand. Yes, we can apply. Okay, revaluation model only to office, and office can be clearly distinguished from the industrial because their function or their use is different. And revaluation is done by class by class. So you can just write that entire paragraph which is written in the summary notes. Hello, and then you can say yes, it can be done. Just copy paste this entire thing. So yes, so if you want, you can do one thing. Accordingly, the notes are made. Entire thing first copy paste this, and then sir. So considering this as per AS ten, yeah, just write down this much, and then therefore because office buildings have a different use, nature and use, we can follow this, and we can follow there. different model perfect sir understandable very much understandable 
चलो नाउ देर इज वन मोर थिंग सर दिस क्वेश्चन इज डन सर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स इज डन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन सर वट इज रिटर्न इन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट एस टू वट इज देर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन सर 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 कैरिंग अमाउंट ऑफ अ प्रॉपर्टी कैरिंग अमाउंट ऑफ अ प्रॉपर्टी इफ आई से दैट इज टू लैक्स सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड हाँ सर अंडरस्टूड सर इट इज अ कैरिंग अमाउंट बट सर इट हैज अब मे बी टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इज वैल्यू एंड थर्टी फोर थाउजेंड इज डेप्रिशन सो टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड माइनस थर्टी फोर थाउजेंड यस सर टू लैख सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड आई कैन सी नेट अमाउंट ओके ठीक है ना दिस इज टाइम पास वाई इट इज गिवन लेट्स इट इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट टू लैख सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड इज अ कैरिंग अमाउंट एंड इट इज रीवैल्यूड एट अ फेयर वैल्यू ऑफ वन लैख नाइनटी सर देर इज अपर्ड रिवैल्युएशन और डाउनवर्ड सर डाउनवर्ड रिवैल्युएशन द प्रॉपर्टी विच इज अपेयरिंग एट टू लैख सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड I am valuing at one lakh ninety thousand. It means I will say, sir, two PPE downward by what value? Two lakh sixteen thousand minus one lakh ninety. So, sir, twenty six thousand property ka value will reduce. First check, do we have reserves and surplus? First debit that, and then, acha, if there is a downward revaluation, first you have to do what P and L account. But already, if there is reserves and surplus, because earlier there was upward revaluation, first that should be debited. If earlier it was C, it is written. The balance on the revaluation surplus to the previous revaluation gain is twenty thousand. So already you did this entry PP account debit to reserves and surplus. So already twenty thousand is appearing. So first debit that. So first and then six thousand will go to the PNL account. I hope you got that point. When it is uh, downward revaluation, first see reserves and surplus. Is it there? Yes. First use that. So in this case, we will say that this is the value of the property. So there is a downward revaluation of twenty six thousand. First, we will adjust again revaluation reserve, and then six thousand will go to the PNL account. I hope that is very much clear, sir. Yes, sir, that is very much clear. Okay, chalo, sir. Now let's come to the next part, which is this. Okay, a set which has a original cost, we will say of seventy six thousand, and accumulated depreciation of sixty two thousand. Okay, so if I just net it off, what is the value of the set in this case? So the value of the set is seventy six thousand uh, minus depreciation sixty two thousand. So the value of the set is fourteen thousand. PP is appearing at this value. Okay, sir. This was the question in May twenty two paper, sir. It came May twenty two. Okay, and you have a November twenty three. Maybe similar question can come. You may never know. Now depreciation. Uh, so this is the carrying amount of the PP. It is written disposed of during the year for four thousand, sir. I sold the set for four thousand. What entry you will pass? Sir, I will say PPE. The carrying amount is fourteen thousand. Yes, sir. Net it off. And then cash. I got only how much cash? Four thousand, sir. Ten thousand less. Where will it go? Profit and loss. Ten thousand ka loss. Simple, sir. Ten thousand ka loss. You will say first of all carrying amount is fourteen thousand. You got only four thousand, so sir, ten thousand ka loss, which will go to the PNL account, sir. Kya baat hai? So we did question number twenty-seven also. Yeah. Question number twenty-seven. So again, if I come here and if you check, sir, what else is done, sir, sir, sir? Here, if you check, yeah, we did this. We did meaning, meaning, depreciation. Wala questions, all we did, whatever are there, maximum chances are there. It will come from this only, because we are doing too many questions. Around twenty-eight questions, twenty-seven plus one extra in between, which was there. Okay. Then subsequent measurement is also done. Cost or revaluation. If it is increased, it should be always. Uh, Uh, reserves and surplus. What is decreased? It should be P and L account. Vaisa. But you have to check the balances also, which is written summary wise. Now, now let us come to this initial measurement. Seventeen questions are there on this. Seventeen. So let us complete this, and we are done with this standard in minimum time. Just for this, I can say that maybe there you will not find any video where we you will not find any video where in minimum time this much coverage is there. We will say there are videos which covers the things. It takes four hours, five hours. We are trying our level best. Okay, chalo. Let's come to this now. Ah, uh, now initial measurement, sir. When you purchase an asset, what all things will come? Understand, sir. We are done with this. Pahila, the first one is meaning, sir. We are done with the recognition also. Yes, sir. Yeah, hashtag CR. Now let's see initial recognition. When you recognize the property, it should be recorded at cost model. Ha, yes, sir. Understandable. It should be recorded at cost model. But when you as per cost, sir, when you it can be purchased property or self constructed property. Understand this. Now let us say, yeah, Rishu. Now understand this. Now let us say that. Let us say that uh, you want to uh, construct or you want to buy something. Let us say you want to buy a machinery. So if you want to buy a machinery, see. This is one part. First, you will go to the supplier. You will pay him purchase price. Give me this machinery or AC. Let us say for that matter, AC. 
you went to them, you paid him. That is AC ka price. He gave you some trade discount, subtract this. Sir, if there is a cash discount, ignore. Cash discount is not subtracted. Cash discount is shown on the PL credit side separately. So it is ignored if it is a cash discount. Sir, import duty, it should be added. When will you add? We are done in AS2 also. Only if it is non refundable. If refund is available, it is not your cost. So if import. Uh, imp yeah, important duties and refund is available, refundable, creditable, ignore that. If question is silent, always those you only this much is written, you will have to write here. It means it is non-refundable. Okay. Then there is a transportation cost. You bought the AC. Achha, this entire cost is known as purchase cost. Hello. This com combining these three is known as purchase cost actually. This part. This part is known as purchase cost. Three things comes in purchase cost. Purchase price, then he gave you trade discount that is subtracted and duties he added. So the bill which you will be having invoice, the invoice or the bill which you will be having, this many elements will be there. Purchase price minus trade discount plus tax. This is the purchase price. Then you will incur some transportation expenses. You will bring that asset to your home or factory. Then some handling, loading, unloading charges, insurance, let us say in transit if it is yeah and then you will say that brokerage Achha. sometimes what you do like even if you buy a mobile you understand that when you buy a phone uh, when you buy a phone let us say when you buy a phone what do you do you do research on youtube like tech reviewers what they are saying as to uh, this phone is best or this phone is best same way when you buy machinery in your uh, factory or anything you do research or sometimes you appoint someone that is agent who will tell you that this machinery is best? Some agent is there in between. So you have to pay brokerage also. When you buy real estate property, you have to pay brokerage. Brokerage wagera. So that should also be added. That buying agent ka commission or brokerage is there. Achha. So now I got this material. Uh, this is the cost. Okay. Now, even few more things are there. Like material. Let us say you want to self-construct. This is something which you purchase. If you want to purchase, so this all things will come. But now let us say that instead of purchasing, you want to construct something. So you will hire, you will buy all spare parts. Let us say you want to construct a machinery instead of buying it. You will construct that. So now what you will do? Sir, you will buy material. Like, like say you are an engineer. So you, you have bought all spare parts. You have employed some workers. They are now assembling everything. Power, electricity, some other cost. Production overhead will come. Sir, what will not come? Sir, this will not come. Admin and selling. It is not connected with that. People. It is just accounting ka expense so these will never come and selling and distribution please understand this yes sir uh shada but all the solutions are there na so i hope that would be understandable yeah now understand yeah online free uh, that is uh, online wala is free but now understand now sometimes what will you do understand this common expenses whether you purchase an asset or where you construct an asset some common things will also be there Sometimes when you buy an asset, let us say asset is constructed or it is bought. Now it is there in your factory. Now when it is there in your factory, you will have to incur site preparation cost. Like when you install an AC, some installation work is done. Installation cost, site preparation, some maybe machine can fall down. It is to make it wobble free. So it should not shake. We have to do something site preparation cost, some installation, some testing. Before you use that machinery, you need to do some testing to check that. And if there is any sales proceeds, you will subtract that. Karke. Some testing is done. So these expenses, any, any consultant or professional is there, you will add those expenses. Achha, when you buy, these are some extra things. When you buy a property and something, you have to add stamp duty. You will buy property too. You will have to pay stamp duty, legal charges. One time if you are buying property in building, you will have to pay joining fees to cooperative societies also. Just an idea. Just... One extra thing and then we are going to start the questions which is one thing you will have to add is present value of decommissioning and restoration liability. What is this? Let me just give you an idea. Let us say you bought an asset today. So you paid purchase cost. If it is self-constructed, you paid that construction cost, come material, labor, etc. Now you know that. Let us say you bought a property or something at one place. There are oil rigs if you understand. Or let me give you some simple example. This property after 10 years you will have to dismantle. When you say dismantle, it means you will have to remove this. Let us you have a mining operations you are conducting. Now, after 10 years, you will have to make that land as it in as it is condition. So you will have to incur some expenses after 10 years. So that uska even present value, uh, maybe in inter uh, there are not many, there is no question on that, but it is like this. Today you are incurring 100 rupees that should be capitalized, and after 10 years. 
you are going to incur 10 rupees after 10 years let us you are going to incur 20 rupees to dismantle that property dismantle or to make the things at as it is so that 20 should be we can say that present value should be calculated of this 20 rupees i hope you understand little bit fm and then it should be added here also you don't have any questions on this these are asked in ca final so you don't have to worry about this it is there but you don't have any questions on this so relax as such i can say if they tell you decommissioning and restoration liability you just need to add that's it brought back to the present value yeah now understand ignore sir what you should ignore that is understandable Tosa, it was there in uh, this also, apna, inventory also, Tosa, Roti, so you are eating Tosa and Roti, that should be ignored, Tosa and Roti should be ignored, what should be ignored, Tosa and Roti, first, T, T bole to tax, tax, when will you ignore, only if it is refundable, so no cost for me, then, office overhead and selling overhead, okay, and abnormal loss, abnormal loss we will sell, abnormal loss or advertisement of the new product we will say or interest interest will be added only if uh, as per as 16 it is a qualifying asset then only it is added okay understand then relocation cost now what is relocation cost try to understand try to understand what is relocation cost let us say that you have a factory now you want to redevelop this factory you want to redevelop this factory you are thinking okay, let us redevelop because this structure can fall down at any time so let us read now we have machineries over here we have workers over here so what we did this all things are shifted to a temporary place okay and there we have to pay rent also those machineries ka. we have to pay rent of 10,000 and we started this redeveloping this property so to redevelop this property I have incurred 10 lakh rupees that is a capital, that is a factory ka cost. Achha, when this, some machineries were there inside the factory, I just transferred it to relocate it to some other place, then bought it back, transportation, everything was involved. 10,000 rupees I have spent on the rent and all. Will you capitalize this? No, sir. It is not for that property. It is just a relocation cost. Or I have shifted something from here to there. It will not be capitalized for that matter. As it was already in ready to use condition. Hello. And this is not incurred for a factory. It is just a relocation. To understand this. This will never be added. So relocation cost will never be added. Please try to understand this. One more thing. Operating losses, like the best example, Jio, we will say that, that Jio has launched its, uh, uh, Reliance has launched its Jio wala thing, we will say, SIM card and all. Initial two years, they gave it for free. Like I'm teaching free of cost, as of now I can see that. So now in this case, yeah, so it is given for free. So in this case, after two years, they started charging something. Now in this two years, revenue was zero. But they were incurring cost, right? So when they were incurring cost, there were losses. Will you capitalize this when the revenue comes? No, you will not capitalize. It will be shown in the PL account only. So whatever operating losses you have, this will be shown in the PL account. Then sir, training of staff. It means let us say you bought laptop. Let us say you bought laptop. Sir, laptop was bought for 1 lakh rupees. This will come in the balance sheet. 1 lakh rupees ka laptop. And you will write it off over 5 years. Wagera. But sir, what I am saying is. My, my employee doesn't know how to run this laptop, sir, how to operate this laptop. I gave him training. For my employee, I have incurred 20,000, sir, to for the training purpose. Will I say the cost of laptop is 1,20,000? No. Asset was in ready-to-use condition when I bought it for 1 lakh. My employee was not in ready-to-use condition. Hello. Asset was in ready-to-use condition. Laptop to was there. My employee was not capable. Hello. Asset was capable. This training cost also should not be capitalized. One more thing, let us say you bought something, let us say a property or something, a laptop, then not laptop, but let us say a property you bought and for that matter you incur 100 lakhs. Let us say you bought some property, you incurred 100 lakh rupees, it is capitalized. But sir, you believe in dharma and all, so let us say that you, 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 yeah, you have incurred some inauguration expenses, Panditji will come and then maybe you have, let us say Panditji ka cost, some opening ceremony was there. To cut the ribbon and everything, some cost was incurred. Sir, will you capitalize that? No, sir. Asset was already in ready to use condition. Just you wanted to do that opening ceremony, you did that. Even if you don't do that, still it is in ready to use condition. So it should be ignored. Sir, what should be ignored? Let us repeat and let us solve the question. We are done with this. Now, understand. First, let us go with the Tosa and Roti. Chalo. Tosa and Roti, mein first, let's go with this. First, Abhi Roti ke andar, uh, tap to switch off ho gaya. Second, I will have to 
टेक माई मोबाइल इट वॉज नॉट चार्ज तो मोबाइल को रख देता दैट्स डू वन थिंग एक सेकेंड जस्ट वेट फॉर दिस और स्टिल दैट टिल दैट टाइम यू कैन जस्ट रेक यू कैन सी दिस एक सेकेंड या सुना एम्प्लॉय इज नॉट इन कंडीशन या नाउ अंडरस्टैंड दिस वेन आई से रोटी तो रोटी के अंदर आई इज इनग्रेशन एक्सपेंसिस वगैरह देन टी टी ट्रेनिंग ऑफ अ स्टाफ देन रील ऑपरेटिंग लॉसेस ओ देन आर इज रीलोकेशन ऑफ स्टाफ दिस इज समथिंग विच शुड बी इग्नोर्ड नॉट रिलेटेड टू दिस देन टोसा में यू नो टैक्सेस इफ इट इज रिफंडेबल ओ ओ ऑफिस वाला वर्ड एज सेलिंग वाला वर्ड ए अब नॉर्मल लॉसेस और एडवर्टीजमेंट शुड बी इग्नोर्ड एंड इंटरेस्ट दैट वी नो अच्छा Sir, one more thing. One more thing, and then uh, let's start the question after this. Okay. Now, one more thing, which is there that uh, income uh, during construction of PPE. Let us say that you are constructing a PPE. This building you are constructing. While constructing this, one is directly attributable income. There can be two incomes that is deducted from the cost of PPE. Sale of debris in redevelopment. Let us say that you constructed this factory for hundred lakh rupees. it was a redevelopment project so for construction you have incurred 100 lakhs but sir when you read you first uh, there was some uh, we can the structure was there upon us go we can say that uh, deconstructed that we will say that so in that case there were some debris in redevelopment which were there scrap we will say i sold it for 1 lakh rupees so now my cost of construction is only 99 lakh because i have incurred 100 lakh rupees for the construction purpose and during that construction activity there was there was some scrap Which was connected with construction during construction, it was there, so it should be subtracted directly attributable. But sir, if I tell you this construction activity was going on, there was some space which was empty. So someone said, "Can we park the cars?" I said, "Okay, but we will charge something. You will have to pay this much to park your cars." Now this car parking amount which you are receiving, it is not during construction. It is just that you are having some space. You gave it on rent. So now this should be directly hit your PNL account and not to the this. So just understand sale of debris. It was during construction. This income you have to subtract from the cost of the asset and car parking charges. It should be taken to the PNL account. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now that is uh, understandable. Let us do the questions. There are too many questions which are there. Now we are in the first part. You can always uh, scan these things later on. Okay. Chalo. Look there. Now. परचेज वाला क्वेश्चन वन टू फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन आर देर ऑन दिस पार्ट वेरी इजी वेरी इज चलो लेट्स डू दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन 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 में तो टोटल फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन लेट्स डू दिस देखो नाउ अंडरस्टैंड it will repeat these questions are in repetitive basis so it should fit in your mind sir there is entity a which is redeveloping uh, it's one of the major stores so there is renovation activity is going on renovation and after incurring this renovation activity more space will be available after you renovate the things and after this renovation expectation of a 15% increase in sales mujhe batao just let me know one thing because of this renovation whatever you are spending renovation renovation is there any future economic benefit you are incurring a cost yes sir but is there any future economic benefit yes sir you are getting future economic benefit sir your sales will increase space is more space is available yes so can you remodeling cost will be capitalized or not yes it will be capitalized you will you can write those conditions of recognition cost is incurred and future economic benefit will flow to the entity and therefore remodeling cost will be capitalized you can write this you can write this conditions that uh, pp shall be capitalized uh, only if two conditions are satisfied you will say this and this and because both the conditions are satisfied remodeling cost should be capitalized and as and when this question comes always write that recognition criteria that would be helpful so yes it should be capitalized it will create future economic benefit so it should be capitalized now there is one freehold building you uh, it intends to knock it down knock down we will say we will deconstruct that and then we will redevelop that okay so building is we are re we are redeveloping one structure which is already there okay factory now we have to move this machineries which are there to understand this now we need to move the machinery okay now understand setup cost is 50 lakh rupees to install the machinery in the new location now this machineries you will shift to some place then you will incur 5 lakh rupees then rent of that premises where you will shift you will have to pay 15 lakh rupees and removal cost 
and trans you will just remove that machinery you will trans loading unloading you will have to incur 3 lakh rupees tell me will you capitalize all these three items not at all sir it is just a movement you have to move this to some other temporary site it will not be added in this cost let us say to construct this week we we paid 100 lakh rupees will you add this also no sir it is not for construction purpose it is just a relocation cost not for construction purpose so cannot be capitalized everything you will write everything here you will write it down and at the end it cannot be capitalized that will be the thing it is a relocation cost or take care Chalo. there is one more thing again an exact same question entity hai. it is illustration 6 i don't understand why institute does that illustration 1 was there in the ici module again same illustration number 6 but so, okay we'll read that understand we have acquired it's a little bit different acquired a new store we have bought a new store there we are incurring renovation expenses when you are incurring renovation expenses renovation will take three months the renovation activity will take three months and for during this renovation period you are incurring some expenses first is construction and remodeling cost so will you capitalize this yes sir there is no doubt at all for that matter it will create future economic benefit vagra. so cost of construction and remodeling will be capitalized but now there is a staff St salary of the staff who will be preparing the store before its opening now once the asset is ready to use after renovation there will be a staff which will be there who will be working there so it will just keep everything at some places for granted then we will start the store and they will work there so now and some other utilities now this is not for construction activity hello it will not be it is a staff salary normal it will be debited to PL account cost of salary and utility utilities will be expensed off in the PL account huh if I tell you this there are workers who are constructing this structure renovation they are doing renovation work then it should be added but these these are normal staff salaries hello we will be preparing the store before it's opening when the store is after renovation they will be just op to open that store there will be some or uh, they will keep the goods at their places so it will not be added just understand this now same way there is significant question number uh, 4 which was there in RTP May 2021 let us understand sir significant renovation cost we have incurred yes sir and this activity will take how many months sir this will be done in the 2 months I have incurred one cost this 18 lakh rupees ka cost and uh, construction and remodeling cost sir will you add this 18 lakh rupees yes sir it is a construction cost it will be added it will be capitalized so 18 lakh will be capitalized there is no doubt with that but after this if i tell you there is one more thing salary of the staff preparing the store and related utilities of 15 lakh and this cost of staff and utilities are operating expenses hello that these staffs are there they will be running the store every day the operating expenses so these are operating expenses everything is written only it will be charged to the pnl account hello understand this now AS10 setting up a new refinery now this is something which is interesting let us see this operating and not included Chalo B part let us understand this now sir setting up a new refinery outside the city limits so now we are constructing one factory let us say this is city this is city which is there and we are uh, uh, we are constructing a new refinery one factory over here refinery over here so now there is no road to connect that so now we are constructing a road for that matter so now construction development of a railway siding road and bridge for that matter so that we can travel we can go to, go to that refinery workers can go there they can work and they can come so there is one more expense see the cost of refinery will be capitalized there is no doubt in that but the road which is constructed we do not have ownership it doesn't matter substance over form if you understand ownership legal title doesn't matter higher purchase many things you must have done even leasing also so what matters is but and this road is available to everyone everybody can use it but first of all two things we have to ask to construct this road whatever we will say or railway siding or bridge have you incurred the cost yes sir you made it and will you get the benefit others will also get but will you get the benefit yes and have you incurred the cost for this yes you can capitalize this understand so derive economic benefit and hence should be capitalized i hope uh, this is uh, very much clear i hope this is very much clear that it should be capitalized because you will get economic benefits karke. yeah yeah now understand it will like trick you in examination sir because you do not have ownership we should not capitalize Are baba ownership doesn't matter you have incurred the cost will you get the benefit yes capitalize this legal ownership doesn't matter yeah chalo now let us come to question number five if i come to question number five 
again there is a renovation activity same same questions it came in 2018 hello renovation last three months what will you do sir will you capitalize this salary of the staff no cost of construction yes you will capitalize 30 lakhs cost of construction will be capitalized but this 7 lakh 50 thousand which is staff ka salary which will not be same questions they ask if you understand same questions okay so next question question number six Achha. now here understand now here is the list which you will have to understand first of all what will you capitalize and what you will not cost of the plant purchase uh cost uh, per cost per supply cost as per suppliers invoice plus taxes so i will see if taxes nothing is given they are non-refundable non-refundable mother it should be added we will say so will you add this yes sir this will be added you purchase you plant is something which is there you bought you bought it you paid the amount yes delivery one machinery we will say delivery cost yes that will be added okay site preparation before installation site preparation activity is done that will also be added consultant consultant we have taken an advice from someone even that will be added but now interest paid hello sir this will not be added are you buy an ac let us say cost of the ac is 20 lakh deferred credit wala that second part is there you tell him ki i don't have money just give it in emi basis so now he is he is telling you you have to pay 22 lakh rupees if it is on emi basis okay so now actually out of 22 lakh you are paying 20 lakh goes only for asset and 2 lakh is actually interest it will be taken to pnl account hello value of the asset is only 20 lakh interest is never added so interest will you will never take you will ignore this see it is done done estimated dismantling cost after seven years you will have to dismantle that yes you will have to that add that also we have just understood that you will have to add that part also Kya baat hai? today the likes are more than 100 during the lecture itself okay Kya baat hai? now so something that you will ignore is this and operating losses are also ignored roti if you understand we just explained that in the roti we will say that there are operating losses so if there are operating losses you're gonna ignore those so two things will be ignored so except these two if you add these parts you will get your cost this and this yeah you will get 43 lakh rupees kya baat hai? So shivam and harsha uh, shiv and harsha that is right answer perfect and two things which are ignored you should always write note in exam first write this and write note because it is not uh, following items are ignored this and this just write note like this this solution and don't write this much just write this two things are ignored karke interest and this that is sufficient chalo now let us come to question number seven if i talk about question number seven exact same question asked in rtp okay what you will have to ignore cost of the plant you will take sir dismantling cost you will take sir operating losses no 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 sir it is ignored they call you it is ignored delivery cost you will take cost of site preparation delivery came then site preparation is done consultant was there you will take same question if it comes for five marks it is a bonus for you as per as 10 following cost will be capitalized it is valued at cost just add everything and one thing you have ignored just write it down that this is ignored karke. how easy is that right yeah chalo uh, now i don't care about likes i have decided it is english so those who want to watch they will watch here yeah. now it will be in english only chalo now let us understand question number eight now let us understand uh, question number eight so let us see this now again uh, exact same question yeah exact same questions if i just talk about uh exact same cost of the plant you will add initial delivery you will add it was again in rtp so there is high possibility you will see the similar question in your exam similar five marks ka question cost of site preparation you will add consultant just refer this question once again huh? day before exam a uh, consultant you will add what you will ignore interest and operating losses sir again the similar thing dismantling wala you will add after seven years so everything will be added to cost will be ignored sir it was there in rtp chalo and then here we go there is again a similar question here little bit twist is there so take the calculator drink some water we gonna calculate the things it was there in paper july 2021 hello I hope now the phobia of standard is not there, specifically of AS10, phobia of AS10 is not there. Okay, it is understandable, now understand. Chalo. There should be a flow in which you should learn, then it becomes easy actually. Now, understand, there is one company, A Limited, there is one company, 
या अनु थैंक यू चलो देखते हैं देर इज वन कंपनी देर इज वन कंपनी एलिमिटेड विच इज परचेसिंग एंड ड्यूरिंग एग्जामिनेशन वॉट यू नीड टू रीड यू नीड टू रीड ओनली दिस पार्ट विच इज अंडरलाइन दैट आई हैव बॉट अ मशीनरी जस्ट अ सेकेंड आई हैव बॉट मशीनरी ओके वन जीरो नाइन ओके तो आई हैव परचेज द मशीनरी विच इज इंस्टॉल्ड एंड इट्स न्यू प्लांट इन फोर मंथ्स टाइम तो न्यू मशीनरी इज बॉट इट इज इंस्टॉल्ड इन फोर मंथ्स टाइम तो इन फोर मंथ्स टाइम वॉट एवर कॉस्ट वी हैव इनकर्ड वी विल एड इट बिफोर इट इज रेडी टू यूज इट टू फोर मंथ्स टू इंस्टॉल दैट मशीनरी ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्पेशल फाउंडेशन इट इज एज गुड एज साइड प्रिपेरेशन कॉस्ट साइड प्रिपेरेशन कॉस्ट इज टू लैख टेन थाउजेंड विल यू एड दिस यस सर टू लैख टेन थाउजेंड एज साइड प्रिपेरेशन कॉस्ट आई विल जस्ट अंडरलाइन दिस यस इट विल बी एडेड देखो टू लैख टेन थाउजेंड चलो आफ्टर टू लैख टेन थाउजेंड द एक्टिविटीज वर सुपरवाइज बाई आर्किटेक्ट ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड which is employed for this purpose at a salary of 35000 do not add 35000 because 35000 is per month this is very important in exam you can make this mistake that's why if you see this this is all uh, uh, yeah this is very important which is this part per month it means you will say that plant will take 4 months this machinery will take 4 months and salary is 35000 so 35000 into 4 hello not 12 are into 4 na baba because it will take only 4 months to construct So it will be incurred only for four months. So thirty-five thousand into four. If I do thirty-five thousand into four, sir, it is going to be one lakh forty thousand. So till now two amounts are written: two lakh ten thousand and one lakh forty thousand. Then, sir, new machinery was purchased for this value. Yes, new machinery was purchased for this value. Something one crore twenty-seven lakh fifty thousand. So one crore twenty-seven lakh fifty thousand. Okay. Then, sir, sum of two lakh twelve thousand five hundred was incurred towards transportation. Transportation again same. I bought the machinery for transportation. I have incurred this, so you will add that also. Or where it is that transportation? One second. Transportation का value is कितना two lakh twelve thousand. Yeah, this is installation they have written. And अच्छा both is written I think. Some of this was incurred towards installation. Ah, uh, transportation charges to bring the the plant site. ठीक है. And there is one more thing. Thirty seven thousand five hundred. That is to supervise. In simple words, everything is added. Just one thing where you can make mistake is this: don't forget to multiply by four because it was written thirty-five thousand per month, and this machinery took four months time. The architect's thirty-five thousand is payment, so into four you will have to do. Yes, sir, understandable. Okay, chal. Next, come to next question. Only this part. Acha, if you change the order, that is also okay. First, write as it is. First, you will write this. This, then this, then this. Chalega, no problem with that. If you change the order, okay. Now understand. Be limited. It operates a major change. Again, you have incurred uh, renovation expenses. Four months it took for the renovation purpose. There is a construction and redevelopment cost and salary of the staff. Now you know only, yar, how many times we have done. So we will add this construction cost and you will expense of in the PNL account the staff cost. So simple, sir. How many times? Capitalize the construction cost uh, and cost of. Staff and utilities should cannot be capitalized. It will be taken to the profit and loss account. How you can write in the examination? First, always you can write recognition cost is incurred and future economic benefits are there and whatever. And accordingly you can write. That's okay. Or it is there. Inter or final? It is inter, na? What final inter? Okay. Question number ten. Now understand this. Again, a similar question, exact similar question. We have to write with me. Chalo. Ah, uh, in the rough. Okay. Omega name of the company purchase machinery okay how much how much time it will take three months it will take it is illustration five in the module sir site preparation cost is one lakh forty thousand let me write one lakh forty thousand done sir this is first cost then these activities will be supervised by the technician who will be employed again sir forty five thousand per month be very careful forty five thousand per month and this thing will take three months so you will say. Forty-five thousand into three, sir. One lakh thirty-five thousand. I hope that is very much clear. Okay, sir. Then machine was purchased for this value, which is this one fifty-eight lakh, and then fifty thousand for transportation and installation. So fifty thousand. And architect was also appointed to supervise installation. के लिए thirty thousand. Just add everything. One lakh forty thousand plus one lakh thirty-five thousand plus one fifty-eight lakhs plus fifty thousand plus thirty thousand. Is there anybody who got the answer? Yes, sir. You will get this answer. Perfect. Yeah, you will get this answer. Everything is added. Just one catch is this. Multiply with this. Five marks question. If it comes, this is the solution which is given by I say. Nothing you should write. Just make the calculation and get the answer. That's it. And get your five marks.
एंड इट मैटर फाइव मार्क्स में फाइव स्टूडेंट्स कैन पास यू नो ओके चलो क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन चलो लेट्स डू दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन वॉट इज दैट सर अगेन सेम क्वेश्चन बट लेट एस सॉल्व इट केम ट्वाइस नवंबर आरटीपी एंड दिस आरटीपी इफ दिस कम्स आई मार्क सर लेट्स सी दिस ओके तो सर देर इज नेम ऑफ द अच्छा आई एम नॉट हाईलाइटेड परचेज द मशीनरी सर दिस इज द फाउंडेशन कॉस्ट साइट प्रिपरेशन दिस इज फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड कैन आई अच्छा 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 सर तो कैन यू जस्ट डू दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक हो जाएगा अच्छा वन मोर थिंग दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द मशीनरी द ओनली एक्स्ट्रा थिंग इज दिस आई जी एस सी ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑन विच इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट इज अवेलेबल वेल यू टेक दिस कॉस्ट नो सर यू वॉन्ट टेक दिस कॉस्ट बिकॉज आई जी एस टी के लिए इट इज रिटर्न क्रेडिट इज अवेलेबल तो डो इट इज इंक्लूसिव तो यू जस्ट नीड टू सब्सट्रैक्ट दैट प्ली हाँ दिस इज जस्ट वन थिंग वेर यू कैन मेक अ मिस्टेक सर सेम क्वेश्चन बट अंडरस्टैंड सर दिस वैल्यू यू विल राइट इट डाउन दिस इज इंक्लूज थोड़ा थोड़ा लिटिल बी टैक्स यू नो ना इट इज इंक्लूसिव राइट इट मीन्स हंड्रेड प्लस ट्वेल्व रुपीज एज अ टैक्स वन वन टू तो इट इज इंक्लूसिव वैल्यू इज दिस इन टैक्स का क्रेडिट इज अवेलेबल तो यू शुड रिकॉर्ड इट एट हंड्रेड तो यू इफ यू जस्ट क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई दिस वैल्यू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई हंड्रेड एंड डिवाइडेड बाई वन वन टू यू विल गेट दिस वैल्यू विच इज एक्सक्लूडिंग टैक्स एंड टैक्स शुड भी इग्नोर बिकॉज रिफंड इज अवेलेबल अदरवाइज तो एवरी थिंग इज इजी कि पहला फर्स्ट वन इज साइड प्रिपेरेशन एट साइड प्रिपेरेशन द सेकंड वन इज फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड पर मंथ एंड इट टेक्स थ्री मंथ्स टाइम तो फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड इंटू थ्री तो फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड इंटू थ्री एंड देन देर इज ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का फिफ्टी फाइव सेवन फिफ्टी फिफ्टी फाइव सेवन फिफ्टी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का एंड देन देर इज आर्किटेक्ट फी थर्टी थाउजेंड थर्टी थाउजेंड दैट्स इट ओनली वन पॉइंट विच इज देर ओके सर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व वॉट इज देर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व क्या बात है many people are still there okay chalo question number 12 rtp again okay sir if i tell you here the list is given okay sir what to do with this sir this list is given and you you need to tell them which costs are added and which costs are not added karke okay roti tosa roti wala cost is not added or you just think sir pehla import duties added sir added see it is written added first wala second shipping cost it is also added sir added it is added okay इंश्योरेंस कॉस्ट इट इज ऑल्सो एडेड सर थर्ड वाला इनोग्रेशन एक्सपेंसेस नहीं सर रोटी टोसा में आई आई इनोग्रेशन एक्सपेंसेस नॉट एडेड सर फोर्थ वाला नॉट एडेड सर नॉट एडेड देन प्रोफेशनल फीस सर एडेड कंसल्टेशन वी हैव टेकन कॉस्ट ऑफ एडवर्टाइजिंग नहीं नहीं सर रोटी टोसा में ए एडवर्टाइजिंग नॉट एडेड सर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन नॉट एडेड सर तो फोर सिक्स सेवन नॉट एडेड कॉस्ट ऑफ साइड प्रिपेरेशन एडेड I hope that was very easy, understandable. You can do this, yes, sir. Chalo, question number thirteen again from the study material. Now there is a twist, little bit twist is there, sir. How many questions are left? Question thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That's it, and we are done with twenty-eight questions in one point five hours. Twenty-eight questions. Okay, with the understanding. Now understand. Chalo. Now, sir, what is there in this uh, question number thirteen? What is there? What else? What is what different is there? Understand? Now they are asking you to classify. Don't just ignore. You just need to classify the items in three things: whether it is a purchase price, whether it is directly attributable, or cost not included. Not included. Ignore. And if it is added, two things: purchase price and directly attributable. Sir, what comes in purchase price? If you see the bill. Initially only I told you in the bill three things will come purchase price. If you buy something online, what will you say? What will you say in the bill? You will say this. Look, if you buy something online, let us say on the Amazon, what will you see in the bill? You will see purchase price minus trade discount, whatever they have given, and taxes they will add, and that will appear in the bill. So that is a part of purchase price. Purchase price, trade discount, import duty. Other than this, everything is directly attributable. Transportation, any other thing. That is directly attributable. Yeah, purchase price. Yeah. So now understand. Chalo, question number, question number, where it went? Uh, question number twelve. Okay. So three things will come here. Other than this, everything is directly attributable. Three things: one purchase price, trade discount, uh, and uh, import taxes. If non-refundable, so non-refundable. Three things. Chalo, let us do this. Acha, directly you can see this. All eight items are written, and it is shown. Ki what should be done? Karke. So now. When I say this, import duty, sir, it is added in the purchase. Yeah, bill me, it can be shown in the purchase price as well, so it will be added. Sir, initial delivery, it will be added. Yes. Is it purchase, trade discount or tax? No. 
it means it is directly attributable but i hope that is understandable directly attributable sir operating losses ignore sir ignore operating losses roti mein oh roti cost incurred while item is capable of operating in the manner of a graph we are operating in less than a we are not operating at full capacity i will just simple words i will say that cost is incurred when you are not operating at full capacity it is also ignored because you are not operating at full capacity some loss is there it will not be capitalized it will be ignored trade discount sir it is there in the invoice purchase price minus trade discount plus taxes import duty wagera this will be a part of purchase price so trade discount will be a part of purchase price from where it is subtracted cost of relocation is ignored and installation yes it is added before it is ready to use you have to install the machinery it is directly attributable purchase is connected only three things purchase trade discount and tax other than this everything is directly attributable administration sir ignore to sa a hey, administration ignore chalo same thing again a same question question number 14 if you check okay if you see this question uh, cost of testing acha whether the machine is functioning properly or not so it should be directly attributable before the asset is ready to use you are checking the asset ki whether it is proper or not then only you can just start the commercial production so you are just checking whether it is testing that asset so it is directly attributable again three heads purchase price directly attributable not included cost of reopening first of all not included that is what you know that uh, inauguration expenses you will ignore acha you also know this cost of conducting a business in relocate uh, new location that is a relocation or include a staff training which includes staff training so from here you shifted there so those employees you have to go training those new employees whatever you have hired you have to give the training ignore that so what you have to ignore is relocation wala that is training wala kharcha is there inauguration wala is ignore purchase price sir it is a part of purchase price fifth wala part everything is written it is a part of purchase price and and sir this any cost directly attributable to bring the asset any cost which is directly attributable to bring the asset to the location and condition necessary before it is ready to use before the asset is ready to use any cost is incurred to bring it to that ready to use condition is which cost directly attributable cost and testing cost that is direct before ready to use testing is done that is directly attributable i hope that is very much clear uh question number 50 a little off bit question where you can make a maybe a uh, you can make mistake wagera a uh, question number 15 this there you can make a mistake so be very careful with this be very careful with this question number 15 understand there are two kinds of trial run dekho once the asset is ready to use before this you do trial run before commercial production you do trial run then once the asset is ready to use now you are thinking that customer should be aware of this see like metro ka i will tell you metro let us talk about metro so before uh, before passenger sits we have to run the metro to test it whether it is running properly or not and once the metro is now done we can just run it we can collect the money from the passengers on very first day or just to attract the customer first week we are saying it is a trial run or we are just saying that now we are giving you tickets at 50% off or 60% off so that we can attract the customer or free of cost let us say this is not something you will say that this loss is there and it should be capitalized no this cost should not be capitalized you are collecting zero money but you are incurring the cost you will not say it is a trial run it is after a set is ready to use please understand don't make that mistake so now there is one amusement park it is soft opening to the public amusement park is already ready to use just a soft opening like a inauguration we will say so that the people should come to know is like a trial run necessary so that uh, people should come to know karke they will confuse you ha huh? that it is necessary for amusement park to be in the condition capable of operating in the intended use wagera nahi please understand this is just a uh, trial run to its attractions we will say to trial run uh, it attractions wagera just so that customers can it is a soft trial run understand we will say soft opening it means as it is already ready to use and just to attract the public we are giving some offer wagera 50% discount and something we are operating at 80% capacity so whatever losses are there or whatever net cost is there can you capitalize that no net operate uh, operating cost 
कैन नॉट बी कैपिटलाइज इट शुड बी टेकन टू पी एन एल अकाउंट प्लीज बी वेरी केयरफुल विद दिस यू विल गेट कंफ्यूज विद दिस इट इज जस्ट टू अट्रैक्ट द कस्टमर अ सेट वॉज रेडी टू यूज बट जस्ट टू अट्रैक्ट द कस्टमर वी आर गिविंग सम डिस्काउंट एंड वी आर सींग इट एज अ सॉफ्ट ओपनिंग इट इज नॉट अ कॉस्ट ट्रायल रन का कॉस्ट विच इज एडेड इट इज टेकन टू द पी एन एल अकाउंट ओके नॉट कैपिटलाइज नाउ Now, sir, we are done with question fifteen. Okay, one hour and thirty minutes. I can see many people are still live. Okay, obviously because we have exam, sir, we have to understand these things. Okay, now, sir, meaning it should be tangible, held for use, and it has life more than one period. We cost we have incurred, future economic benefits are there. Then only he will recognize depreciation. We are done component. Ah, uh, subsequent me there are two parts: cost model, revaluation model. We are done. Now purchase वाला we have done what cost should be added what should not be added and when it is added it has two parts purchase cost में what will come others are directly attributable purchase cost में three things will come purchase cost plus trade that is minus trade discount and taxes other than this everything is directly attributable now sir if you purchase asset on deferred credit if you purchase asset on deferred credit sir when you say deferred credit means what sir उधारी उधारी we don't have money sir तो will you add interest no you don't have any question as such but just understand that concept okay so if you understand this a uh, pp acquired on deferred credit on credit you bought it so that is payment beyond normal credit terms normally they give you 10 days ka credit period you said i will make the payment after 2 years okay so now asset which normal value was which normal value was 20 lakhs you have to pay now 22 lakhs it means can i say 2 lakh is your interest The interest is transferred to PNL account. Okay, please understand. And recognition of PPE. PPE is recorded at normal price, which is a cash price. If you pay the price today, you will have to pay only twenty lakh rupees. Record at that extra amount which is paid because there is a delay. You have to pay interest. It will be taken to the profit and loss account. That's it. Just remember that if it is given in the question, cash price of the asset is twenty lakh. You paid twenty two lakh, and because you got the credit, so this two lakh extra will go to the PNL account. As an interest expense, and asset will be recorded only at twenty lakh. That is understandable. Last part, and sir, we are done with the standard. I hope that was easy. That was understandable. Yeah. Last part, exchange of asset. Little bit complicated. It inter level, maybe they do not complicate, but maybe at final level they can. Okay. So now understand this. The last part of this. So next ten minutes, and then we are good to go. We are done with the standard. Yeah. Guys, let's do this. PPE is acquired in exchange. What is exchange? Now I bought machinery. I want machinery. So sir, what I did instead of giving cash, I get the machinery. But now instead of giving cash, let us say I was having land. So I said take this land and give me this machinery. This is known as exchange. You did not pay cash. Hello, cash nahi gaya. Instead of cash, what you gave is land. That is the exchange. Now understand. Now always, if the question is silent. Transaction has commercial substance. What is commercial substance? I will make you understand that. As of now, just wait for this. Let us just first understand. Let us just first understand as to or uh, this. Recognize PPE up. Uh, and if you all are interested, even I am planning. Uh, when the law paper is there, when it ends in the evening, we are gonna plan important questions. Ka costing ka marathon. I am planning in English only because for Hindi students already a marathon is uh, there. So we will be doing some marathon kind of a thing for costing also. Let's do this here. Okay. So connected, stay connected for that. Now understand. Now transaction has commercial substance. Tra uh, understand this. Now understand this. Uh, I will take some time just to make you understand this. Not that important from exam, but it can come. So let us do that, sir. Let us say that machinery is there. Yes, sir. machinery and you gave the land let us say land okay so land is given and you got the machinery it's you so you gave the land and you got the machinery that is exchange understandable now the question arises when you give the land it should be two land account there is no problem with that and because machinery is coming in it should be machinery account should be debited but now the question arises sir machinery account should be debited at what value sir land should be credited at what value simple wdv whatever value of land is appearing in your balance sheet you are giving the land just credit with that simple acha sir so if you sell the land let us say land ka value the balance sheet mein land was appearing at 100 rupees you sold the land for 120 what will you do you would have said sir land went to land 100 rupees and i got kitna rupees let us say 120 cash 
so cash 120 and 20 rupees is your profit but land will always be credited with the book value it is going out so you will say 100 rupees land was 100 rupees you will credit but sir the question arises this machine should be debited at what value understand land ka value was 100 rupees yes sir if you sell this land in the market what value you will get from the market if you sell this land in the market what value you will get let us say fair value of the land is 120 okay what you would have done you would have, you will go to the market you will sell this land you will get 120 rupees and then you will buy this machinery like you went to the we will say that you went to market you sold the land you got 120 rupees you bought the machinery for 120 rupees that machine account debit to cash account then so machinery will be recorded at fair value of asset given up instead of selling the land and then getting the money and then buying the machinery selling the land then getting the money and then buying the machinery what i did i just gave the land i buy the machinery so i will say what the fair what is the fair value of the asset given up to buy this machinery i gave you 120 rupees not the book value what matters is the fair value of the asset given up but sir if fair value of asset given up is not available then what will you do then you will take fair value of the asset acquired fair value of the asset acquired if this land car fair value is not available because of any reason it is there in rural area or maybe the fair value cannot be estimated because in past two years there is no transaction so in that case you will say the machinery is bought at what value it is generally traded you will take that value or if nothing is available no fair value is available so sir don't do anything rather than wrong estimation do one thing record it at 100 no fair value you have just record it at 100 i hope you got this till here you understand this till here you understand this like you exchange the mobile now this is understandable book value now sir sometimes you do one thing sometimes you exchange cash also sometimes you exchange cash also means dekho you gave the land let us say the fair value of the set given up is 120 so you bought the machinery let us say you bought the machinery so you will record it at 120 but sir one more thing understand you gave the land and after giving land you give one more thing you give cash also you give cash also and you give cash of 30 rupees so now what what value machine should be recorded at what value machine should be recorded so you will say that sir the land given at 100 rupees and cash given is uh, 30 rupees you will not record at 120 uh, you what at what value you will record so first you will calculate this above amount that is what is the fair value you will say fair value is 120 i give land worth rupees 120 plus i give 30 rupees also to acquire this it means i will record it at 150 hello and then balancing figure will be profit or loss i hope that makes sense and if cash is received tumko samjha kya to get the plan I, I hope you understood that to get this machinery what all you give fair value of this fair value of this fair value of cash is cash only that is 30 rupees you give and fair value of this land is 120 so this total should be recorded at 150 okay total this uh, value you give Achha, if i tell you like this fair value of this even though it was 100 but fair value of this uh, asset was uh, let us say 120 and when you got this machinery he gave you machinery also and he gave you 20 rupees also he gave you 20 rupees cash you gave someone your land he gave you 20 rupees and machinery also it means value of the machinery was 100 actually because when you gave someone land he gave you 20 rupees so 100 rupees let us do this so cash if it is given now in uh, this much time only that much i can do so let us do the question i will say maybe Achha. Now, what is a uh, commercial substance? Let me just give you this idea first of all. What is commercial uh, substance? Karke? Now, understand. When I say commercial substance, maybe that much time is not there to go in much detail. But commercial substance is like very simple. If I buy machine, uh, if I get machine and if I give land. So, now after this transaction, will it affect my cash flows? Yes, it will affect my cash flows. Maybe land was there, I was earning some rental income. Now I got the machinery, I will produce something and I will sell it. Earlier I was getting rental income which was lower maybe. But now I will produce and I will sell, so I will get sales income. And which can be higher or lower, whatever is the case. But there is, it is affecting my cash flows. So, transaction is commercially right. It is, it is actually a commercial transaction. So, PP uh, acquisition affects the cash flow of the entity. It means it has commercial substance. Sir, how can you say transaction doesn't have commercial substance? Dekho, sometimes what will you do now? You want to earn profit. It's you. Let's go little bit in detail. It's you, Mr. A. Uh, just two, three minutes. There is A and B. Okay. And I, if I tell you A has one machinery. 
and one has one land so now they want to book profit internally they want to book profit internally maybe this is machinery is 100 and its fair value is 120 Achha, if i revalue this if i revalue this 20 rupees will go in which account revaluation reserve if i revalue this uh, book value is 100 fair value is 120 20 rupees will go in the 20 rupees will go in the revaluation reserve account now i want to book profit so they are internally saying even he has a machinery Mr. B as a machinery. So he says, let us interchange internally. Or on the records, let us interchange on records. What will happen? I got one machinery. I gave you the similar machinery to that fellow. There is no change in cash flows now. There is similar machinery. I, I have a blue car, you have a red car. We have changed the cars. Now in this case, why? Because I wanted to book the profit. So what will happen in this transaction? You will say, sir, machinery event 100 rupees. Now, when new machinery came, fair value of the asset given up. What is the fair value of the asset given up? The machinery which I gave, the fair value was 120, 20 rupees profit you should book. Are but you haven't sold, there is just exchange on paper, nothing has happened. Same machineries are exchanged. So by this, actually you can book the profit in PNL account of 20 rupees. So if company wants to increase the profit, they will do exchange internally. You do exchange, I do exchange internally, just on paper. So it means transaction doesn't have substance. Just to increase the profit, many people manipulate the things. So it is given, just record it at book value. That's it. Book value of the asset given up. You have this in your book. So machinery should be at 100. New machinery should be at 100. So no profit will be booked in this case. So you cannot manipulate the things. Okay. Let us do the question and we'll finish it off. Chalo. 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 Let's last part. Last part. Uh, where it is a uh, question number 17 18 let's understand now it is in the illustration now there is a mr entity a entity exchanges a land with the book value of this so land will go first of all understand land will go to land 10 lakh rupees because land is going and when land is exchanged what else is coming cash is coming cash of 20 lakh rupees so you will record the cash of 20 lakh rupees okay and plant and machinery is valued at 2 lakh 50 thousand you will write the plant and machinery but at what value it will be written? Preference number one, fair value of the asset given up. Hello, preference number one, fair value of the asset given up. That is fair value of this land. It is not given in the question. Then fair value of the asset acquired. If you see the preference which is written, the fair value of the asset acquired is kitna? 25 lakh rupees. So simple. You will record it at 25 lakh rupees only then. That I give 10 lakh rupees. In, and for that I have got cash also. I have got this also and book the profit and loss. The balancing figure will be in the profit and loss. So new asset will be recorded at this 25 lakh rupees. First fair value of the fair value of the asset we will say given up which is not their land which is we have given up. So fair value of the asset received we will say simple. Last question. Question number 17. Again I am exchanging my car. So car is going. So we will say car is going to car. Achha, what is the book? Many things are given. What is the book value of the car? 13. Achha, let, let's pass the entry. I am exchanging the car. So to car, to it is for sure will come car X. 13 lakh, I will write it off. And it has a fair value. Its fair value is given. Okay. And for a cash, I got a cash also. 15,000. Okay. So now if you understand, car Y which has a fair value of 13 lakh, car Y came. I have exchanged my car X for two things for car exchange car X was exchanged for cash and car Y. So I got the cash, I got the cash and now car Y if I just talk about car Y should be recorded at what value? Preference number one, fair value of the asset given up. So fair value of the asset given up, do I have this? Yes, 13,25,000. If there is no cash transaction, I would have said the car I gave Against that I got new asset, so it should be recorded at fair value. So fair value should be this, uh, I hope in shortcut we can understand this, fair value of the asset given up, because that I could have sold, then I could have bought this asset, instead I am exchanging this, so fair value of the asset given up, but I have got cash also, so if there is a cash, I have got cash, so I can say that I gave this asset, I got 15,000 cash, this much fair value asset I give, I got 15,000 cash, so asset should be recorded at 13 lakh 10 thousand. Ek second. Achha, achha, ek, there is one sentence. Achha, we don't have to do anything. The transaction lacks commercial substance. There is one sentence which I did not read. Just sorry for that. Transaction lacks commercial substance. Matlab, they are exchanging car just to book the profit. Transaction lacks commercial substance. Don't just think anything. The if transaction lacks commercial substance, just understand this thing. 
the asset will be recorded at fair value of the uh, carrying value of the asset given up dekho this idhar gaya the asset will be recorded at just to show you this the asset will be recorded at uh, kidhar hai exchange exchange ek second are yaar okay the fair, yeah see here it is no profit and loss will be booked the carrying amount of the asset given up it will be recorded at this value carrying value of the asset given up that's it the new asset will be re recognized at that carrying amount of the asset given up so now in this case no profit and loss will be recorded no profit and loss nothing will be recorded you will say this because commercial that was like if transaction has commercial substance but it is written in the question transaction lacks commercial substance to so no need to worry we will just record two car this book value which is 13 lakh rupees if you check which was having a book value and you got cash of kitna you got cash of this cash of this uh 15 lakh rupees so we will say cash and no profit and loss so when i say car buy so it is always recorded at a uh, fair now this is carrying amount plus if you uh, give the if you receive the cash that should be subtracted which is 15000 so book value 13 lakh and minus 15000 that's it that's it so we are done with this we can say that finally uh everything is done uh maybe i hope the exchange wala part you understood it actually takes more time to make you understand about that thing in detail but yeah in shortcut i have tried my level best yeah the things are written by that you can i hope definitely understand the things thank you so much guys uh, we'll meet our uh, possible as 16 i will plan to make the notes and everything it takes time 4 5 hours it takes to make the structure and everything uh in much better manner but yeah thank you so much uh, possible will update in the telegram group uh, thank you so much you can you do like you can like the video if you are till here and you can always comment hashtag #crmer yeah that gives uh, some boost to my channel at least non monetary benefit you can give me thank you so much bye bye we'll meet with the next slide if possible will update in the telegram group bye bye guys yeah